The irony of it brings me to my te brings tears to my eyes. Once upon a time, I would have done anything for an opportunity like this to hurt him, to pay him back for everything he's done to me. Now, though, gently and slowly, I roll onto my side, turning my body fully to face his. I shift closer to him and snuggle into his warmth, pressing my forehead onto his chest, feeling the warm skin pressing onto my own. I breathe deep, take in the smell of him, the secret smell of him, musky, animal, dangerous. Tears roll down my cheeks. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> it's just, I feel like there are so many emotions bubbling in my chest, and I die. They didn't come out in tears. Light breath, the light breathing halts. I don't move. I, I can't move. He doesn't want me to get close to him. I know that he doesn't. But, but no, he doesn't. He doesn't do as I expect. His eyes, his arms wind tighter around me, pulling me closer to him, holding me so close that I can barely breathe. He doesn't say anything, and neither do I. But he's awake, and I know that he, I know that he is. And in this beautiful moment, he's holding on to me, clinging to me just like I cling to him, because he needs me just as much as I need him. Yes, he's awake. I can feel his arm curl around me and creep up my back, tangling his fingers in my hair. As somehow, somehow he pulls me yet closer to him. I don't say anything. I don't even open my eyes. I don't want to say anything to shadow this beautiful moment. Because in this moment, he's being more truthful to me than he has ever done before. The tiniest of smiles creeps over my lips. And so, for the first time, I fall asleep. I find myself falling asleep in his arms. The most adorable thing ever, right? Are you gushing like a little girl right now? Eek! It's adorable. He's like so in love. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> this, this chapter. This, this chapter. I think from 32. He's never really shown that he loves her. I'm gonna say the word love because he's like, I care for you, whatever. I, I think basically it's the same thing, you know, he loves her. So basically, I'm saying that he's loved her for a while. I don't think he gets what love is, and I think that he's starting to really actually show it at this point. Like, he really is, like, kind of like, you know, I fucking hate you for, like, the first half of this book. And, it, like, he really did. And he's like, I find you interesting. And he's like, I really enjoy talking to you, and it's weird. And now he's like, love you. Totes love you. Can't handle it. But I'm not denying it. <laughs> I wake up, drifting into consciousness once again. His arms isn't his arm isn't around me anymore. I open my eyes. There's no one in the bed next to me. I sit up quickly, looking out into the room. What if he's gone? Left me here alone. But no. I breathe again as I see him, standing in front of an open cupboard. There's a thud as he puts something down before he closes the door on whatever it is. I pause as he sees me. He looks like a different man from the one I saw last night. Fully clothed, expression, his expression guarded, his eyes cold. He opens his mouth as if he's about to say something, but then he closes it again. I self-consciously tuck a lock of hair behind my ear, not really knowing what to say. He breathes the silence. He breaks the silence eventually. Aren't you going to get dressed? He asks, his voice clipped. I press my lips together, hastily climbing out of the bed and running to the middle of the floor to pick up my robes as quickly as possible, flushing with humiliation. He just watches me, one eyebrow raised slightly, as I, crump as I scramble for the robes, pulling it over my head, hastily arranging it so it's completely clothing me once again. And then he stands still. The pair of us just look at each other. I don't know what to say. After what happened last night, I just... I don't really know where we stand anymore. Mind you, with him, I never really know where I stand. A knock comes at the door, making me jump out of my skin. Lucius! Oh god. Oh god, I can't breathe. It's Avery. Lucius looks at me, his eyes wide with fear. Lucius, I, I need to speak with you. It's urgent.
Lucius whispers before he strides across the room, picking up an invisibility cloak from the floor and throwing it over me unceremoniously. He checks to see if I'm completely covered before he turns and walks to the door, opening it. Avery stands in the door, open doorway, his face, as always, expressionless. The Dark Lord wants to see you. He says abruptly. Both of us. Immediately. Lucius pauses before he answers. I can see his expression. All I can see is the back of his head. Of course, he says swiftly. Of course. He turns back to his room and looks straight at me with his back to Avery. Unseen by anyone except me, he narrows his eyes slightly before turning and following Avery out of the room, closing the door and locking it behind him. I stand very still, my breath heavy. What, what, what does he want me to do? He must want me to stay here. If I unlock the door, he can't want me to leave. It would be laughable if the situation wasn't so desperate. <laughs> I sit down on the floor. You might as well freaking sit on the bed as hell a freaking whatever, dude. <laughs> fictional story, fictional story, okay. <laughs> I sit down on the floor, sitting on my heels, making sure that every inch of me is covered by the inclusibility cloak, and I wait. Oh god. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> There's someone outside the door. I heard them. There's, there's someone here. Aloha Mora. The door swings open and I almost cry in sheer terror as Draco steps into the room. He squeaks his, Why do people bother locking the doors if he can just Aloha Mora that shit open? Like, that's hella dumb. Like, seriously. Like, when you lock shit, he's like, I'm gonna lock my room. Like, when he was leaving, I don't remember when, he like locked his door and I'm like, that has, like, literally nothing to do with anything. Like, why are you locking it? Does that make any sense? Sorry. Mm. The door swings open. I almost cried. <laughs> he sweeps his eyes across his father's bedroom. His eyes narrowed. His expression relaxes when he sees the room is empty, but then hardens again when he sees the messed up state of the bed. I can't breathe. I just can't breathe. He looks at the unmade bed for a moment, for a few moments, with a tiny frown on his face before he shakes his head in apparent exasperation. He turns, stepping out of the room and closing the door behind him. Thank God. But he's still there. I can hear his voice. The hell are you doing here? I've been sent to clean the room. It's Ron's voice. But if you want to make the job. What would you want to take the job over? Go ahead. By all means. Dominos. Me. We see. Draco hisses. Just do what you're here for. Just do what you're here for. <laughs> There's a short pause and then. Enjoy rooting around in your father's room, did you? Ron asks before he laughs. You're pathetic. Shut up. And don't tell my father what you just saw. I'll make you regret it. I hear his footsteps click down the corridor, and then bang on the door on the other end of it. There's a long silence. Hang on. Oh, shit! Draco! Draco didn't lock the door! Fucking stupid bloody ferret! I slowly, silently raise myself up to my feet, looking at the door. Hopefully Ron hasn't noticed. Hopefully he'll just carry on with his work and everything will be alright. But of course... God hates me. <laughs> and slowly the door handle moves. See? God hates me. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get the symbolism. Get the metaphor. Get it. Get it. Get it. Ray Bradbury beating you over the head with that symbolism. Oh my god, it's everywhere. I like just... Okay, I don't want to sound like an idiot. And I read a lot of literature. But I like just like sat there in my in uh, the other room, the room next to my room, which is like my living <laughs> not living room. Uh, it's a TV room. It's like got a bunch of pull-out couches that turn into beds and like a, a TV. I used to watch Treatment in there during spring break. Uh, anyways, I was reading when I was doing all of the, the crap. I was in there. Anyways, not the point. But I was doing that and I just sat there for a second and I'm like, oh my god, it's a fucking allusion to the Bible. And then I was like. I'm not religious, like, I'm, I'm like, straight up, ne never read the Bible, never heard any, I've never been to Sunday school, I don't know anything about the Bible other than, like, the real basics, and I don't really think in terms of, like, oh, that's an allusion to the Bible from XYZ, because I don't really believe that people 
I don't know. I guess it's like the most alluded to things. So it's kind of stupid to think that way, but this doesn't just naturally come to mind. Anyways, and I was just like, oh my god, there's a fucking illusion of the Bible, dude. Like, she's fucking Eve, and he's fucking Satan. And it's like, <laughs> she's fucking Satan, get it? Sorry. Mm, anyways. And it's like the fall of man, and I was like, the fall of man! Oh my god! And then I was like, God, with all the mention to God, where she's like, oh, you know, I'm praying to God, blah, 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 blah. Also the fact that, by the way, that, like, she's like, oh, man, she's like, she always prays, and every time, this is, I don't even know, this has anything to do with the Bible, but, like, every time she prays, Lucius comes. Like, if you notice that, if you read, like, she'll pray, and she'll be like, please help me, or please, I'm just asking for blah, fill in the blank. And then everything she prays for actually does come true, and everything she asks for whenever she asks for help or whenever she asks for salvation, it is always him that gives it to her. Like, he's, he's like, she's like, oh, Lucy's mouth with the answer to my prayer, she says sarcastically, but it's like, it's so freaking true. It's like, he is, he is her knight in shiny armor in like the most disturbing way possible. <laughs> but I mean, he died. He is, he's her savior and her, I don't even know, her, that's the worst thing that ever happened to her, <laughs> whatever. You want to say that for, but the yeah, I'll mention to God, straight up cray cray. Anyways, I'm so tired because I'm not really at all, and I haven't read any of them. But no, not even the Heart of Darkness. I'm supposed to read section two, and I'm just not gonna read that book I've decided. I'm not even that long, and I'm like, no, I'm not in the mood. I'm not in the mood to read that. <laughs> As I read Eden, <laughs> I don't care. Like it's the end of the year, and I don't fucking care. It's like freaking oh my god it's almost May guys it's so exciting it's the 24th today I don't know how long later in the world this is gonna get uploaded but it's 24th of January <laughs> July of what, what month is this the fourth month of the year uh, April that's the one uh, but of course God hates me oh yeah I'm I'm pausing for dramatic effect you understand this right here God does hate her. I don't believe in God, but <laughs> the God, the God that is in this story hates her. I swear to God. Have you ever noticed that? Like, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to stall. I'm, I'm really not. I'm just. Have you ever no like? Have you ever seriously like? It is so objective to how much God exists. It depends on the author so much. And I know that's like a derp to derp, but like, there's so many different of the same exact person. They're not a deity. I'll say it like that. Because he's in, like, all books, you know what I mean? Because he's the dude, but he's so different. Like, he's like, oh, he's like, oh, forgiving or not forgiving, and he'll do whatever, you know, suits the author or whatever, or doesn't really suit the author, the character's, you know, wants or whatever. But it's kind of like, it's amazing to think that even in literature, he exists. Because, you know, all fictional characters exist because you know i don't know that's how i feel i'm weird i'm a i'm a writer i, I like a cruise like is my baby like i birthed him i know everything about him above him to death and even though he's a fucking asshole sometimes not even the point but like i like in my soul like he's as real to me as other people like i know more about him than i do about other people i mean some other you know strangers, people that I don't know very well, and even some of my friends, like, it's just, and it's not even when you're a writer, like, I don't know if people understand this, but, like, when you write, like, you can have in mind, you can have in mind what you're gonna say, but they exist, you know what I mean, like, I can write, and he just says things, like, I just type it, and I'm like, why, like, why am I going in this direction, and then, woo, Jen, who's his love interest, it just answers him, and like they're both in character of course but it's just kind of like they it's not just me I don't know I'm sounding like a weirdo uh, it's not just me and it's not just them they exist and they're just kind of in me and they just do what they're gonna do and they just have the conversation that they want to have and it's not really up to me as much as I want <laughs> and then I'll try to fix it and I'll be like it's not it's not fixable because it's not broken. It's just not. I don't know. Anywho, the Medea's the shit is gonna hit the fan. Is everyone excited? I'm building up tension. Is really what's happening here. Ron is in Lucy's room. 
Hermione is under an invisibility cloak. Is the shit going to happen? Isn't it going to happen? Is it going to build up and then fall flat? Like other shit in this book has